Okay, so let's take a look at how to get started with Flipgrid. Now, I've waited a while to do this video because I knew there was an awesome update coming. So I'm going to do this as if you've never seen it before. But if you've used Flipgrid before, you might want to check out some of the alternative ways and new things that are available in Flipgrid with the update that's just landed today. So first thing I'm going to do is go to Flipgrid and you'll notice straight away it's got a new icon, which is really, really nice and, and colourful and really pops. I'm going to go into it. Um, I'm already logged in, so it's going to say welcome back. Um, you'll notice now that there's this just enter the join code and go. Um, and my recents are here still. That's a really, really quick way to do things. But we're going to look at this from an educator's point of view. So I actually need to go to the educator page. So if I go to the ellipsis at the top and go to the educator dashboard, it's going to take me to the web version of Flipgrid where I get to do lots of the building and the back end stuff of making this awesome app and work with my students. So I've got some groups already set up here, but we're going to go through the whole process, starting a new group um, and then adding in those topics for discussion and just look at the whole setup um, of what we can do. So the very first thing I want to do is go to create a group. You'll see that it gives me the option to make this a private or a public group, depending on what you want to do with your students, whether you want this to be uh, something for a community, or whether you just want it in your class. I'm going to keep mine as a private group at the moment, and I'm just going to simply call it our class. You'll then see it gives you the class code. Now, that might be fairly simple for your lots of your learners. Um, I might want to make this something even more specific. So we're just going to call this Class Wales. And just hopefully that's available. If it is, this might be something which is easier for your students to recognize. Could be that you want to call it Digital Leaders or whatever. So you have that option, or you could just leave it with the code that you come with. You then have the option to either add students by their student email, so they would be able to just utilize their Microsoft or Google emails, um, or I can create a list for the students to be able to join. Again, thinking about the age of your students, they might not have emails, so therefore I can create a student username um, for them to be able to join, and they'd be able to jump into my flip grid grid. Okay, I'm just gonna choose the student mail and go to next. Now you'll see here it instantly recognizes the end of my email account and I kind of want to keep it that way for my class. I don't want any students from outside or using a different URL but if I was somebody I wanted to invite into this I could just add in the URL. You just need to be a bit careful there because obviously any uh, end URL you add into that would have access. So you just need to think about how you're doing that and then obviously there's an option for a password that I'm going to leave off just at this point. So I tap on next and then we've got this option to like duplicate some of the topics. Like I might not want to recreate everything all the time. Um, the very first thing you ever do with your students is great to just do like a welcome, a hello, how are you? Um, because I've already got some topics in here, you can see that I've got some things in here. Um, I use this to onboard my digital champions, um, talking about my students when they leave, you know, where are they going? What's their next destination in their in their journeys into into being teachers? I'm actually just going to leave this blank for now because we're going to go through this process as if this is the first time. So I just skip on skip and then we'll see that we have this option to share the class. Now I can create a QR code, I can embed this and put this into um, other areas of, of my um, learning management system. I can send it out through Google Classroom or I can um, put this out onto Remind as well. But actually at the moment I'm just going to copy the link and then go to the group. Now, because I've copied that link, I can then send that via email. I can you can do anything with it because it's, it's a URL. So this is our class. We've got no topics at the moment, but we have a class space that the students can come into. Just a little bit of the anatomy of this space then. I can add in a co-pilot. That's basically an additional educator who I want to co-teach alongside me. Um, you know, It might be that I want this to, to be a, a learning support assistant who might be working with me. It could be that I share the class with another member of staff. But just there's the opportunity to have someone have that kind of top level overview. We then have the option to share. So if you missed any of those links before, we can grab those again. And we can change some of those additional things. You know, if I want to make this class, you know, I've, I've called this our class. Imagine I've got two classes in the same year group. Um, I can just simply duplicate it. I can change my notifications, how I want to, to get things. You can integrate this into Teams, which is great. So if your school that's using Teams, it's a really, really quick way to be able to have this sit within Teams so that you don't even need to leave Teams in order to access your Flipgrids, which is pretty cool. 
And then finally the pencil, which is my edit tool. So if there was anything that I messed up when I was setting this in the first place, I can just jump back in and change any of those settings. So that's just the, the kind of simple way that you can just navigate your page. Next thing to focus here is I've got this kind of image, doesn't necessarily make sense to my class as such. So maybe we should change that image. So in order to do that, I can just jump in here and go to the personalize. And you see that we have these headers that we can drop things in, or I can just choose any of these pictures. And there's loads to choose from, different themes that you can choose as well, you know, just to make it very personalized to your students. I quite like this colorful rainbow one. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that and just update my page. And there we go, that's just a nice kind of picture to have on there. But again, you can personalize this and have your own photos in there if you really want to. So once we've kind of got our class set up, the next thing to focus on is adding this topic. So I just tap on add topic, it takes me to the next page, very similar to the one before in terms of creating your class. I'm just gonna now create the topic. Good recommendation and one that, that comes with Flipgrid is the hello and welcome. So we're just gonna say hello. And the prompt then is what do I want the students to do? Say hi and introduce yourselves. Great one for the start of a new year, the start of using Flipgrid for the first time, especially as we're thinking about this remote learning environment and students not necessarily being able to be together in person. This is a great way for them to start to get to know each other, get to know each other's personalities. We can then choose the recording time. Minute 30 is probably a little bit too long for this. Don't want to put people under pressure. I'm actually going to put it up to 30 seconds maximum. But one thing to highlight is you can now go up to 10 minutes on this. So quite useful for older students potentially using this as a presentation tool as well. Obviously choose your uh, captions as well. This is a really, really useful feature so that you can instantly have that um, image uh, video closed captioned as well. So make sure you change that to your native language. This is a nice feature, video moderation. Um, I might not want all the students to be able to see the videos as they're uploaded. I might want to see them first. Um, a really, really nice feature uh, just to protect people. You never know, someone might accidentally upload something that they shouldn't be, and you don't necessarily want that going to all of the other students. So this is a nice way that it comes to me first as the moderator, and then I can say whether it's it's okay to go to the rest of the class. And then this is the, the section which kind of makes it Flipgrid, right? It's the, the fun element of these things. What do I want to put in there to engage my students to want to talk? Now, the simplest thing is to record your own video. I'm going to have a look at the camera in a different video and all of the other things that you can do. But there's lots of other ways that you can add in content here. How do I want my students to be engaged in the information that I want them to share with me? Now, I'm just going to go to the GIFs here, and I'm just going to write something in to search for. Uh, not too many L's in hello, but there we go. I quite like this bear just sort of waving at me. So I'm going to put that in there. That's my focus. It's kind of the, you know, the what, what are the students going to see when they first go in? Now, last couple of things. Um, I can save the changes to my default settings if there's anything that I've changed that, that I want to just be standard all the time. So again, my closed caption I changed for United Kingdom instead of American. Um, but other than that, I'm just going to go to Create. And again, I get another flip grid code. This goes specifically to this um, activity. So this is not going to the main topic area, this uh, class area. So this is going to this topic. So it just I can focus students' attention on what I want them to do. My class has got my topic all set up. Here's that class. The very last thing we do is go in to record the responses, but we're gonna look at that in a separate video because the camera feature has been updated and there are so many cool features that you can use. So tune in to the how to use the camera in the next video.